Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and uh, we'll continue our series going through the Bible, and today we'll be looking at the prophet Obadiah, the prophet Obadiah in the Old Testament. So please turn to the book of Obadiah, and we're going to be reading verses 15 to 16. It's a bit shorter book, right? It's the... Um, Actually, it is, it's the shortest book in the Old Testament, right? Um, but um, so we're just, we just have a few verses here to read. And that's Obadiah, verses 15 to 16. All right. You ready? The day is near when I, the Lord, will judge all godless nations. As you have done to Israel, so it will be done to you. All your evil deeds will fall back on your own heads. Just as you swallowed up my people on my holy mountain, so you and the surrounding nations will swallow the punishment I pour out on you. Yes, all your nations will drink and stagger and disappear from history. God bless me of his word. God's judgment. The title today is God's judgment. So the bit of bit background here, um, Obadiah is a prophet from Judah, talking about God's judgment and Israel's deliverance and restoration on Judgment Day. So this is Obadiah's vision about Edom. With, we're not certain, the date is uncertain. It's probably recorded uh, around, around um, 586 BC. So what happens here is that God promises judgment against Edom, since they took advantage of the Hebrew people, the Israelites, during the Babylonian conquest. So again, uh, this is the shortest book of the Old Testament, but it packs a punch. All right. So the, um, the topic here is that God judges and will judge every person. God judges and will judge every person. So in verse 15, well, this refers to Judgment Day, uh, that is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And why this is important to understand, this is absolutely crucial and important for you to understand and also share with others who may not know this, is um, uh, Jesus tells us about the verdict um, when he comes, returns on Judgment Day in John chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. So <coughs> please turn to the Gospel of John chapter 3, Verse 16 to 21, Jesus says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. God bless me with his word. Highlight this verse. I would encourage you. Very important passage. Um, this is the verdict that Jesus announces. Um, that That's the um, what will be on Judgment Day. So take that to heart and share it with others who may not know, um, you know the importance of this um, Verse. So back to our body verse in verse 16, uh, it says drink and stagger. So this is a common biblical you know, metaphor of experiencing God's judgment. So in Matthew 26 in the New Testament, uh, Matthew 26 verse 39, Jesus refers to this cup in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we read, he went on a little farther with his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. 
yet I want your will to be done, not mine. So there's a big one. God punishes all human sinfulness, right? So um, God's justice uh, has to be accomplished. And Jesus, um, thank you, Lord Jesus, for surrendering to uh, God the Father in, in Gethsemane, as you you were here as God in the flesh. And um, because uh, without this, we would have no, uh, there's no um, atonement for our sins. As Jesus, just shortly after his then um, sentenced to death um, and then crucified and dies on the cross and then rises three days later and ascends um, a little while after too. So big one, God punishes all human sinfulness. So uh, considering about um, looking back now in our passage, um, the application of our passage. So all right. So when you think about the fact of God's judgment, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you when you think about uh, the fact of God just God's judgment? It means that because God judges and will judge, all people, both believer and unbeliever, our call is to turn away from evil. Big one. To turn away from evil. Okay? So in Psalm 34, verse 14, in the Old Testament, Psalm 34, 14, we read, Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. God bless reading of word. Why? Why are we called to turn away from evil? Because we ought to stay away from godless people. Right? So there's a ripple effect. As iron sharpens iron, when we we don't stay away from godless people, um, something happens. Psalm 34, 15 to 16 helps us here. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. God bless you of this word. Sound familiar? Like Obadiah, right? So they will be remembered no more. Um, the um, the uh, nations will drink and stagger and disappear from history. So um, because of this, so basically the lesson is what we do in this life matters. Right? It's very important to seek out God's will and his plan and purpose and timing for us because what we do in this life matters. So they're both temporal consequences and eternal consequences. So consequences in the here and now, what we do, and eternal consequences. And Paul writes in Galatians 6, verse 7 to 8, helps us here. Galatians chapter 6, uh, verses 7 to 8. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you planned. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. God bless you, Lord. So that's, of course, the Holy Spirit. So may we heed the Apostle Paul's words as he also writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. God bless the reading of his word. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.